Hi, this is Gabe from Fluent Forever. At this point, we've gone through all the sounds of Dutch. If you're using our app, it's going to take you through all of these sounds, train your ears to hear them more accurately, and teach you the spellings that produce them. And then it'll push all that data into your long-term memory. And if you're not, that's fine too. I made these videos to give you a passing familiarity with all the sounds of Dutch, so that when you're ready to study them in depth, they're going to feel more familiar. And that'll make them easier to learn. In either case, I want to cover a handful of important Dutch spelling rules before we finish, because they're the rules that require a touch of explanation, rather than just straight memorization. So let's get started. Our first topic is consonant voicing and devoicing. Almost every consonant, in English and in Dutch, come in voiced and unvoiced versions. You can get a feel for this by putting your hand on your throat and saying zzz. You should feel buzzing in your throat. Zzz. And that, that buzzing, it means that z is a voiced consonant. If you do that exact same thing, but say s instead, like an s, you'll find that there is no buzzing. S is the unvoiced version of zzz. And many of Dutch's consonants are paired up just like this. B is voiced P. G is voiced K. D is voiced T. Z is voiced S. And V is voiced F. Now, in Dutch, this becomes important in three different contexts. So, the first is the most common. When you find a voiced consonant at the end of a word, you're going to devoice it. So, the D at the end of hond is going to turn into a T sound. And the B at the end of rop will turn into a P sound. The next spot where voicing becomes important has to do with what happens when you see a voiceless P, T, or K in the middle of a word followed by a voiced nasal sound, like an N or an M, or before a B or a D. And when that happens, the P, T, or K, it's going to become voiced. They'll turn into B, D, or G, which you'll see in words like klapdeur, or biljartbal, or zakdoek. It's not klapdeur, it's klapdeur. Not biljartbal, but biljartbal. And not zakdoek, but zakdoek. Basically, the P, T, or K, they take on the voicing from the next consonant. Note that the same unvoiced to voiced consonant transition thing, it happens in English too, like in the word backdoor. People generally don't say backdoor. Instead, the K becomes an almost unheard G. It takes on the voicing of the next consonant, backdoor. And just as a reminder, Make sure not to overpronounce your consonants in Dutch. It's a very subtle voicing change that happens here. Klapdeur, biljartbal, zakdoek. Our last place where we're going to mess around with voicing is kind of the reverse situation. This time, you have a voiceless consonant, like a P, T, or K, or an S, or an F, or a H sound. And then the next sound is a V or a Z. In those cases, the V or the Z is going to de-voice, and it's going to turn into an F sound or a S, an S sound. That gives you words like kampfuur and rotzooi. In these cases, it's not kampfuur, it's kampfuur, with a clear F in the middle. And it's not rotzooi, but rotzooi, with a clear S sound in the middle. Basically, the Vs and the Zs, they're matching the voiceless consonants that came right before them. Our next topic has to do with nasal sounds, mostly with the letter N. So first off, the controversial final N. You're going to see a lot of words ending in the letters E, N, and that spelling at the end of a word is usually unstressed. When that happens, in typical conversational speech, the N in that syllable is often silent. That gives you words like hersene and springe. And even compound words where you get the unstressed N syllable in the middle, like fietserek, in these cases, you're not hearing hersenun or springen or fietsenrek, but rather hersene, springe, and fietserek. The tricky thing about this spelling rule is that it's not quite true everywhere. And there's not a lot of rhyme or reason as to when some Ns are pronounced and some aren't. Many speakers pronounce words like hersenen with a very light N at the end. Hersenen. And if you ask someone to carefully pronounce a word that has a final E-N, then you will absolutely hear it as clear as day. So 
If you're starting out, I'd recommend that you always pronounce your ends. And this is what you'll hear within our app. The important thing is only pronounce the N very slightly, just to indicate that you know it's there. Dutch folks will likely appreciate this as it shows you're paying close attention to their language. And then, once you get more comfortable with the language, you'll begin to naturally drop the N's. Next up, what happens when you get a nasal consonant, like an N or an M, followed by another consonant, like a K? Say in a word like mankacht. It'd be hard to pronounce that N in the front of your mouth, followed by a K at the back of your mouth. Mankracht. So instead, you'll make the N using the back of your tongue. Hmm, mankracht. It's the exact same thing that we do in English in words like sing or in sink. In Dutch, you'll see this phenomenon move that N all throughout your mouth, always matching the position of the consonant that comes afterwards. So an N before a B or a P, a consonant made with your lips, is going to turn into an M, also made with your lips. Giving you words like pinpas. An N before a K will turn into that back N that we just talked about. As in mankracht. An N before a uvular consonant like an R or a G, those will turn into... Hmm. That's an N made even further back in your mouth. As in wijnglas. And N or M before an F or a V or a V sound will be made using your bottom lip against your upper teeth. Hmm. As in bronwater. Last, an N before a J turns into ñ. As in oranje. All of these transformations are pretty unconscious. Basically, just let your tongue do what it's going to do naturally, and you'll find that your N's and M's will jump right to the right spots without you having to force them there. One final rule regarding consonants is the observation of double consonants, specifically the ones that show up in compound words. So generally, Dutch doesn't have double consonants, but compound words are an exception. There are some Dutch compound words where the first word ends in a consonant, like koppijn, headache, which is composed of kop, head, and pijn, pain. And the second word starts with the same consonant. And there you really will hear a bit of a double consonant where you stop for a second on the P sound. It's koppijn rather than koppijn. And you hear the same thing in trekkoord. We'll mark this in IPA by writing the consonant twice, separated by a period. So now let's talk about vowels. Many vowels in Dutch have one spelling that can produce two possible vowel sounds. For instance, the spelling O. For Dutch words that produces O as in klom or O as in stro. Or the spelling U. That can produce E as in geum or U as in juweel. Dutch tends to classify its vowels into two categories. There are the so-called short vowels. As in a, e, o, e. And then there are the so-called long vowels. A, e, o, u. Let's start by talking about how to identify the long vowels. So, first off, if you see two vowels in a row, then you know it's going to be a long vowel. That one is easy. So here's a, as in man, e, as in been, o, as in boat. And U as in costume. The trickier one becomes identifying long vowels when there's only one letter. Here's A as in sla, O as in stro, E as in bezem, and U as in juweel. The idea here is that you'll use a long vowel whenever the syllable ends in a vowel rather than a consonant. That's easy to spot when you have one-syllable words like sla and stro. There's no consonant at the end, so it must end in a vowel, so it's long. But bezem and juweel are a little trickier. How do you know it's not bezem and juweel? Figuring this out is mostly a matter of counting consonants. If you just see one consonant after a vowel and that consonant is followed by another vowel, like in bezem and juweel, then that consonant is going to be part of the next syllable, not the first one. So the syllables in these words are be, zum, and u, veel. Contrast that with some examples of short vowels. Here's a, as in 
pak je e as in getting, o as in klomp, and e as in gum. The last two examples are again simple. Clearly those syllables end in one or two consonants since there's nothing afterwards. But our first two examples, pak je and getting. Those are short vowels because you're looking at two consonants after the vowel in question. Anytime you see two consonants like that in the middle of a word, then that first vowel is generally going to be short. Incidentally, that change in vowels is the only way you can hear the two T's in a word like getting. Dutch doesn't have double consonants. You're not going to say get ding with an extra long T. But since you're not saying gating with a long E, it's clear to a Dutch speaker that the word has a double consonant hiding in the spelling. Now that you know about long and short vowels, let's go through some examples comparing them side by side. So first we'll start with a, like in mannen and manen. Notice the presence of double versus single consonants. It's easy to tell which word has a short or a long a. Next up is e, as in spellen and spelen. And then we've got o, as in botten or boten. And finally u, as in bukken or buren. This one isn't as similar as the previous ones, but it's close enough for you to see the difference between the two. We have one more vowel topic to cover, and that has to do with the schwa. The unstressed e uh sound we talked about in the last video. Schwa shows up in two possible spellings. One, whenever you see an e that, by the rules we just discussed, should be a long a sound. Meaning that it's an e at the end of a word, or it's in the middle of a word with only one consonant afterwards. But importantly, in this special case, the e has to be in an unstressed syllable. In cases like that, you'll pronounce the e as a schwa. That gives you words like amandelen and meisje, where all of those unstressed e's are pronounced as schwa's. The other spot in Dutch where you'll hear a schwa is when you run into an unstressed i-j, usually at the end of a word. That gives you words like heerlijk. That's basically all for vowels except for what happens when they show up in loan words. Modern Dutch has taken in a lot of words from French, German, and English. More than that, they've adopted the spellings and sounds of those words from their original languages, which can make reading Dutch a bit tricky, because several letters behave differently when they're used in native Dutch words compared to when they're used in loan words taken from French or English. This ends up being an issue with three consonants, three basic vowels, and three nasal vowels, and I'll point out the various pronunciation options for those spellings so that they don't surprise you too much when you run into them later on. So first, the spelling G. For Dutch words, G is generally pronounced G, as in geit. But English loans use G, as in goal. And French loans use J, as in gin, or J, as in horloge. Then comes the spelling J. In Dutch words, that generally spells J, as in jongen. But for English loans, you'll use J as in jungle, and for French ones, je, as in je. And then we have the spelling ch. Dutch pronounces this as ch, as in schildpad, and also uses the same sound for Greek loans, as in chaos. But English loans are going to use ch, as in checken, and French ones will use sh, as in chirurg. Now a few vowels. So first off, there's the spelling O, as we just mentioned. For Dutch words, the spelling O can produce O as in klomp, or O as in stro. But if you see that letter in a French loan word, then it's not going to follow our rules about long and short vowels. Instead, it is just going to be an extra long version of that O sound, O as in trombone. It's similar with the letter U. As we mentioned above, this one produces a short vowel, e, as in gum, or the long vowel, u, as in juweel. But if you're looking at French or German loan words, then again, it's not going to follow the rules for long or short vowels. Instead, if it's French or German, 
then it's just going to be u, as in truc. And oddly enough, if you see an English loan, then you'll use a short vowel e, as in truck. Since Dutch doesn't have the English vowel e. Uh. The next spelling is e u. This one is pronounced o, as in roos in Dutch words. But if it's a French loan word, then it will turn into a long e, as in freule. Finally, we have to discuss the issue of nasal vowels in Dutch. Simply put, Dutch native words, they don't have nasal vowels. But many French loan words like plafond, genre, and bulletin do. Something to keep an eye out for is if the vowel is followed by an N. This indicates when it is a French loan word that the vowel is going to be nasalized and the N is not going to be pronounced, just like how you pronounce it in French. The IPA indication of this nasalization, it's by putting a little tilde over the affected vowel. So we have on, as in plafond, and then a, as in genre, and un, as in bulletin. And with that, we're on to our very last topic, word stress. This is actually pretty simple in Dutch. For English, word stress is basically random. You just have to look it up. And we have words like incense and incense, where the word stress can determine the meaning of the word. Dutch tends to be a lot more systematic. Generally, you're going to follow three basic rules. The first rule is that Dutch words are generally stressed on the first syllable. So here's schaduw, spiegel, aardappel, and stropdas. First syllable gets the stress. The second rule is that there are a few prefixes that are unstressed. Like ge or ont, or ver. If you see a word that starts with one of those prefixes, then you'll stress the second syllable. So here's gebed, ontbijt, verpleegster. All starting with unstressed prefixes. Our third rule is that if you're looking at a loan word, then you can generally forget about rules one and two, and instead you'll use the stress that the word had in its original language. That gives you words like ingenieur, laboratorium, and museum. And those are the three word stress rules, which work the vast majority of the time. There are some exceptions, naturally, but all in all, you'll find that word stress is pretty predictable in Dutch. And with that, we are all done with Dutch pronunciation. To quickly review, we began by talking about consonant voicing and devoicing. Specifically, we talked about three cases. One, that if you see a voiced consonant at the end of a word, then you'll devoice it. Giving you a t sound at the end of hond and a h sound at the end of rop. Second, we talked about how p, t, and k in the middle of a word can become voiced when the next sound is an n or an m or a b or a d. That gives you words like klapdeur with a b in the middle, biljartbal with a d in the middle, and zakdoek with a g in the middle. Third, we mentioned that a v or a z can devoice, turning into f or s if they show up after a voiceless p, t, or k, or s, f, or g. That gives you words like kampfuur and rotzooi. Our next topic has to do with nasal sounds. First, we mentioned that when you see the spelling en at the end of a word, then that n is often going to be silent, giving you words like hersene and springe. Although some Dutch speakers are still going to pronounce that n, especially when they're pronouncing things slowly and carefully. And when you're starting out in the language, remember to just practice actually speaking your ends, just very gently. And then you can start dropping some of them later on. Then we talked about how N and M change to match consonants that come immediately after them. So an N before a B or a P is going to turn into an M. As in pinpas. An N before a K will turn into that back N. As in mankracht. An N before a uvular consonant like an R and G, those will turn into... Hmm. Made even further back in your mouth. As in wijnglas. N or M before an F or a V or a V sound will be made using your bottom lip against your upper teeth. M, as in bronwater. Last, an N before a J turns into N. As in... Oranje. Then we talked about observing double consonants, but only in Dutch compound words. 
like in trekkoord and koppijn. After the nasals, we went on to talk about long and short vowels. Long vowels were a, e, o, and u. And they showed up either whenever you saw two vowels in a row, as in maan, been, boat, and kostuum, or whenever you had a syllable ending in a vowel. And you could tell that was going to happen if you're at the end of a word and there's no consonant, as in sla or stro. Or if you're in the middle of a word and one of those vowels was followed by just one single consonant. As in bezem and juweel. Conversely, short vowels show up whenever a syllable ends in a consonant. And you could tell that was going to happen if you're at the end of a word and there's a consonant or two there. As in klomp or gum. Or if you're in the middle of a word and you see two consonants after a vowel. As in pakje or Ketting. After that, we mentioned the various spellings of the unaccented schwa vowel. E. It's either going to be an unstressed syllable that ends in the letter e, as in amandelen and meisje, basically using the same rules we just mentioned to find a long e vowel. But when that syllable is unstressed, or when you see an unstressed i j, in words like heerlijk, and that was it for long and short vowels. We then talked about Dutch's tendency to copy spellings for their loan words, making it a little tricky to figure out which spelling produces which sound. The spellings you needed to be aware of are G, J, and C, H for the consonants. G can be G, 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 or J. J can be Y, J, or J. C, H can be G, Ch, or Sh. And then the spellings O, U, and E, U for the vowels. And O N, E N, and I N for the nasal vowels. O can be O or O. As normal, but loan words won't follow the long or short vowel rules, and the French O vowels are extra long. U can be E or U. As normal, but loan words again don't follow the long and short vowel rules here either. French and German loans are generally all long U, and English loans are short E. And then EU can be O or E. For the nasal vowels, ON sounds like ON, EN sounds like AN, and IN sounds like A. Last, we went over word stress, which had three basic rules. You stress the first syllable, as in aardappel, unless there's a prefix like GE or ONT or VER. If you see a prefix like that, then you stress the second syllable, as in gebed or verpleegster, or unless you're dealing with a loan word, in which case you follow the stress it had in its original language, like laboratorium and museum. And with that, we're through with our review and done with Dutch pronunciation. If you need a hand in memorizing all of this and training your ears to hear it, then use our app to do so. You'll have all of this memorized within a couple of weeks. I'll see you next time.